the acceptance rate of this particular problem is only 47% and that sounds really bad. So let's try and change that by solving our today's problem which is gas station. In this particular problem, you are trying to travel across a circular path with a bunch of different gas stations on it. Each of these gas stations have different amount of gas available and you are also given the cost it takes to travel from one gas station to the next. Finally, your goal in this problem is to return the starting index from where if you start your journey from, you are actually set on to complete your lap. It sounds a lot like a F1 race problem. So let's try to wrap our head around it using that as an example. So you have a F1 track and there are a bunch of different pit stops on it. Each of these pit stops have different amounts of fuel available. You want to travel from pit stop to pit stop and keep your gas tank full so that you can complete your laps. So in this particular race format, you want to decide which pit stop you want to start from so that you are set on your way to complete your track. And if it is the case that your team hasn't arranged enough fuel for you so that you can complete the laps, well, in that case, you are going to return minus one as there is no solution available from where you can complete a lap and you're done for, you've lost the race. So that's the idea. Now let's take an example and take it straight to whiteboard so that we can first understand how we can manually solve this problem and then we'll start to think algorithmically. So let's take the first example where the gas is one, two, three, four, five, and the cost that it takes to reach from each of these stations to the next station is correspondingly given as three, four, five, one, two. So let's write it down in the whiteboard and see how we can visualize the problem there. So we are at the whiteboard and let's try to write out the example that we just discussed. So you have gas available as one, two, three, four, five. And for each of these stations, the corresponding amount of cost it takes to reach to the next station from here is given as three, four, five, one, two. So this is your gas that is available to you at each of these different stations. And this is the cost to travel to the next station at each of these stations. So remember, the track is a closed loop. So let's try to visualize that in that form. The track doesn't necessarily need to be a circle. So my potato shaped circles is really good for this video. And let's say our station one is located here, which has a fuel reserve of one, and it takes the cost of three to move from that station to the next station. So it's gonna take a cost of three to reach to my second station, which has a fuel reserve of two, and it takes the cost of four to move from that station to the next station. So now that we have finally visualized our problem where each of these arrows represent the cost it takes to move from one station to the next station, and each of these anchors, you can see, represent the fuel capacity that is there at that particular station. So how can we go about solving this? Well, let's first try to solve it manually and see the pattern from there. So if we are at the first station and we try to start our journey from here, we'll see that we are starting our journey with a car of zero gas. And when we come to this station, we get fuel of one unit. And to travel to the next station, we need at least three units of fuel. So this is not feasible at all. You can't even move the next station from here. So this is rejected. Then we start from our second station and we see that if we want to move to the next station from here, we need fuel of at least four. We again start with zero tank and we see that the fuel available here is two. So zero plus two is not gonna be enough to reach us to the next station. So two is also rejected. Now, if we start from three third station, we see that the cost to move to the fifth station is again five and we still have only the fuel capacity of three. So this is also not possible at all. So all of these stations are rejected in the first movement only. Now, if we start at fourth station, we see that moving to the fifth station, we need a fuel cost of one unit only. And the fuel that is available at the fourth station is of four units. So basically we have enough fuel to travel to the fifth unit. So let's try to travel this path till we actually find uh, iteration where this path is actually not possible. So we travel this path, we see that we have the total fuel of four, we travel this to the fifth station and now we have a fuel left of three. When we reach the fifth station, we have again five units of fuel available to the total fuel we have uh, becomes eight. And to travel to the first station from the fifth station, it again takes two units of cost. So now I have the fuel available as six, but by reaching at the first station, I get another one units of fuel. And from there, 
I want to travel to the second station again, which takes a cost of three, which will make my total fuel go to four. And once I reach the second station, I'm gonna receive two units of fuel again. From here, when I want to move to the third station, the cost is four units. So it's gonna take four units of fuel away from me. So I'm only gonna be left with two units of fuel. And here I have three units of fuel available. So at max, I'll have three units of fuel, total making it five. And that is just enough for me to reach back to the fourth station, which is where I started from and the lap is completed. And we know from the problem description itself that the answers for this particular problem are unique. So we know that four is our answer as we were able to complete our lap from here. So we can say that the fourth station, which is at the third index is our solution for this particular case. And that's why if you go back to our example, we see that three is our output. So now that we have wrapped our head around the brute force solution, let's try to think of an optimization we can do by exploiting a pattern in this particular problem. So the only constraint that we have or the only bottleneck that we are maintaining throughout our problem is the amount of gas that is currently available inside of our gas tank. Now, one interesting thing to observe here is that whenever you start from any index and try to move forward, if your gas is become negative, that means that that particular index is not correct for you. And that makes sense that we have already discussed. But one more thing to observe is that let's say if you were allowed to move here and your gas become negative at this particular instance, that means that not only is one not a proper solution, but two is also not a solution. And how can we say that? Well, at any point of time, if you're allowed to move forward, that means your gas remained greater than or equal to zero. And if you are moving from here to here, that will also mean that your amount of gas should remain greater than or equal to zero. That's how that movement is legal. Now, if your value has become negative, if you started from one, that would also mean that your value will become negative if you started from two, because uh, this operation could have only added gas in your tank, it could not have taken away gas. So basically you start with a gas of zero. And if you start at one with zero gas, if you are allowed to move to two, that means your gas either remains zero, which is equivalent of starting from that particular index, or your gas value increased because there must have been some extra fuel available at one. But it can never be the case that your gas is negative when you move from this particular value because you are allowed to move from there. So whenever you reach a negative gas value, you know that move is illegal and anything before that is not a part of the solution. So basically when you are traversing the array, if you see that from traveling from one, you see that you finally were able to reach four, but at this fourth station, you saw that your gas value became negative. That means that neither is one, neither is two, nor is three a solution. All of the three solutions are instantly discarded because each operation can only add to your gas. It cannot take your gas less than what your starting gas value is. So if that makes sense, this simplifies our problem to O of n time because from a single iteration, we are able to remove all the other values that came across our path and that is the optimization or the pattern we have to observe in this particular problem. I hope the explanation made sense to you and you are able to wrap your head around the idea that once you go from one part to the different gas station where you have finally became negative, all the different gas stations that come in your way across that are also discarded because each operation is additive or it keeps you equal. If it is a negative operation, it would have come up as an illegal move and you would have discarded the all the iterations that came before it. So for example, in this case, in this loop, we would have disregarded one as our solution. In this case, we would have disregarded two as our solution. Here we have disregarded three as our solution. And finally, we would have got to four. So this would have solved in O of n time. And let's try to code it up. I think the code will help you understand the problem better. And if you have any doubts, please let me know in the comments down below. Always happy to answer. We are back at lead code and now we can finally start to write code for the solution that we just discussed. First of all, we said that we want to maintain a variable which stores the amount of gas that is currently available in my tank. That is going to be represented by a current gas variable, which is going to start at zero as we are starting our journey with an empty tank. And I want to iterate through my gas and cost variables as I come across them. So I'm just going to maintain a for loop which is going to maintain the indices for me to travel across this array. So 
I'm going to go to len gas. Both of these lens are equal, so that doesn't really matter anyway. And inside of this loop, first of all, I want to maintain my current gas value. So whenever I reach a gas station I, I know for sure that the gas that is available here is going to be added to my tank. So current gas plus equal to gas at I. Now, what do I do with the cost? So basically, if I can check from this particular station, if the next move is going to be illegal or not, I can just do that from cost of I because cost of I is going to tell me what is the cost of moving from this station to the next station. So this value itself can tell me if the value is going to become negative in the future and the iteration we are doing, the current solution that we are maintaining is going to return into a failure of a value. So what I can do is I can subtract the value of cost of I directly from my current gas and this is going to tell me if my the solution that I'm currently maintaining is going to lead to a value that leads to illegal moves. And in here, I'm going to check if current gas is less than or equal to zero, which is when I know for a fact that this particular index is going to lead to a solution that leads to negative values. What I want to do is I want to make my current gas to be equal to zero, which means I'm going to clean my slate. I want to say that I want to start afresh. I the solution that I was working with doesn't work anymore. And at the same time, I want to maintain a solution that is going to be updated to index plus one. So to do that, I will also have to maintain a solution variable, which is going to again start at zero. And it is going to tell us that the values that I've seen till now are not going to solve the problem. And as we said that this particular index is going to lead to a future of a bad index. That's why I'm setting the solution to I plus one, which basically means I'm setting the solution value to a point which is after this particular set of solutions we were maintaining that all lead to a negative value as we just proved in the solution we discussed before. So now let's return the solution value and see if this is working or not. Let's try running this. Okay, so we received wrong answer for this one and we received the right one for that. Well, we are missing a very clear case right now. As we see, we are missing the case for when we were expected to return minus one and we return two. Well, we are not returning minus one in any of the cases in our particular solution. So how do we take care of that? Well, there is one more pattern we need to observe in this problem or one more fact to be observed, which basically means that whatever my cost is, if my total gas doesn't cover the amount of total cost I have to pay, I'm not going to be able to complete my overall lap. So basically, I can also maintain the total cost and total gas in another variable. And I can finally say that if my total cost is greater than the total gas I have available, I want to return minus one in that case because no matter what I do, no solutions exist in that case. And while doing this loop, we were assuming that a solution does exist. And that's why we are appending the solution to be I plus one. We were never checking if that I plus one was a solution or not. We were just ensuring that if this particular solution is not true, we want to make the next value to it as our solution. And to see if there is actually a solution or not, we'll have to compare the total gas and total cost, which we are going to be maintaining now. For that, I'm just going to do total cost plus equal to C of I and total gas is going to be plus equal to gas of I. It's going to be cost. I don't want to do any more typos. And here I just want to check if total gas is greater than total cost, then I'll happily return solution. And if that's not the case, I want to return minus one. So this should take care of the edge case that we just saw. So let's try rerunning this. And now we are failing for this particular problem. Well, we have written the F condition incorrectly. Total gas should be greater than equal to total cost, not just greater than. If it is equal, then also it can cover up the whole cost. So let's try rerunning this. Now it should be finally taken care of. Cool. Both the test cases are accepted. Now let's finally try submitting this to see if this is working or not. So submit. Drum rolls. What happened? Oh, wow. it showed the solution here for some reason. Let's try to bring that back here. So it is accepted and uh, it beats 100% in runtime. So we are cool in that. In memory, it only beats 5.97%. Uh, I'm not really sure why that's the case because we are only using O of one space and we are not using any more memory anywhere else. 
So I'm not sure why would that happen. If you can find a better solution that also optimizes memory, please let me know. This was my solution. I hope you enjoyed the explanation and the code made sense to you. If you have any doubts, please let me know in the comments down below. Hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. Bye-bye.